For this recipe, we're going to be producing one gallon of tomato wine using three pounds of sweet grape-sized tomatoes, three pounds of white granulated sugar, a gallon of spring water, a freshly juiced orange and its zest, a mug of strong black tea, a packet of Red Star Premier Classic wine yeast. Now we'll start to boil some of our portion of our gallon of spring water. Not the whole thing, maybe about half. Now once our water's gotten to a little bit of a boil, we're gonna start adding in our tomatoes to help soften them and kill off any bacteria or wild yeasts. You can use Camden tablets to do this, but I prefer boiling. And then once it starts to warm up, we're gonna smash them a little bit to release the juices, soften the pulp, and continue our boil. As we continue to heat our must, we'll begin adding our sugar. And as you add it, give it a good stir to help dissolve the sugars into the must. And of course, we want to add the remainder of our sugar and stir that up to dissolve it and continue to smash those little grape-sized tomatoes. And you can use whatever tomato you want for this. I prefer these because they're really, really sweet and just absolutely delicious. And we're gonna let that continue to simmer and we'll cover it. As you see in the background, I'm already enjoying a nice home brew. And right now I'm gonna take a little bit of water from our must I'm going to let it cool in this ramekin because I'm going to be using this water for my yeast starter. And once that cools down, I'm going to add my yeast to get it blooming and ready to produce alcohol. And after my must has cooled down, I'm going to pour it right into my primary fermenter. And as you can see, it looks like a deep red tomato sauce. But as it cools down, as it starts to age, it's going to mellow out to a nice straw color, almost like a Chardonnay. At this point, I was tempted to turn it into pasta sauce. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut my orange in half so we can get it juiced. And this will be my acid component to my tomato wine. Now tomatoes are already pretty acidic, but this particular tomato it's a very, very, very sweet tomato. As you see, I'm pouring over the rest of my one gallon water and adding my black tea. That's going to be my tan in addition and my orange juice. And it's going to bring my specific gravity to 1.110. So hopefully if the yeasts devour all the sugars. It'll fart out about 14.4% alcohol. At this point, I'm adding my yeast. And a little bit of vodka for my airlock. I prefer vodka because it's a sterile solution. Pop that on there. And as you see, my primary fermenter just wasn't big enough. All right, so we're going to be putting this into secondary fermentation, and it's gone down to a 1.026 specific gravity. Now, this is the fun part. This is where patience is an extremely important tool in the toolkit of a home winemaker, because we wait, and we wait, and we wait, and we wait some more. 
So I ended up with some headspace in my secondary fermenter, which of course you don't want. You want to minimize the amount of oxygen you have in your secondary fermentation. So what I did to combat that is I did another tomato boil. So I'm going to put some of this tomato water into my secondary to eliminate that massive amount of headspace that I had. And after that, of course, in goes my airlock. Make sure that's in there nice and secure. Get my vodka for my sterile solution. And of course, it's also a nice excuse to have a cocktail afterward. And I'm surprised to see how much it's still bubbling away in its secondary fermentation. It's almost hypnotic watching those bubbles come up from the surface. And it's still bubbling at the airlock. And I like to secure my airlocks with some tape, as you see, because sometimes on these carboys, that carbon dioxide can work to push those out a little bit. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and rack this wine one more time. Pop off that airlock. Give it a quick sniff test. And obviously it smells pretty good. Well, it's still a little hazy. I do like the color. It's a very attractive color and not at all what one would expect from a tomato wine. And give it a little taste here, hoping it's all right. And not bad, a little sweet, but you know, Pretty good, now we're gonna finish racking it off into its last fermenter. So after the racking that you just saw, I ended up letting it sit for about a week and it had a little bit more headspace than I was comfortable with, maybe about an inch more than I would have liked. And it also finished off a lot drier than I expected. That tasting that you saw me uh, sample had a, a mildly sweet flavor to it. It was really delicious. It didn't taste like tomato. It tasted kind of like a, like a sweet Chardonnay, as I've heard people describe tomato wine as tasting like. So what I ended up doing was I made a simple syrup solution where I had uh, combined two cups of water and a cup of sugar, and I added that to the wine. So what I'm going to let it do now is I'm going to let it sit for about six months. Hopefully time will help clear some of the haze. Right now it's about the color of a hazy IPA. Uh, but still, I'm, I'm looking forward to the flavor. I'm looking forward to seeing what the color does with time. And in about six months, I'm going to pop it back open and we'll do another tasting. And I'll let you know how it turned out. Now, if you yourself have made tomato wine, I'm excited to hear what your experiences have been and what you would suggest what's worked well for you, what hasn't worked well, and please like and subscribe so I can continue making some ridiculous wine videos, you know, to add to the other thousands of home wine making videos that are on YouTube. So if you made it this far, I'm humbled. I appreciate you and I'm grateful for your time. Thank you so much. I'm Paul. This has been Nocturnal Fermentation and I'll see you in about six months when we taste this wine again.